In this video, I'd like to talk about solving square root equations. And the general strategy for solving these types of equations will be very similar in each of the problems that we do. But essentially what we'll do is we will solve one side of the equation for the square root term, and then we will square each side of the equation. And to understand why that works, let's look at a much simpler example. Let's say we have the square root of x is equal to two. And to solve this, to get x by itself, I wanna cancel out this square root. But squaring and square roots are opposite or inverse operations of each other, where it's essentially the same thing as if you multiply by two and then divide by two. The two operations will cancel each other out. So if we square each side of this, we are squaring a square root and they're gonna cancel each other so that we just get x here. And over here we get four. But based on our original equation, the square root of x is two, you can see that this makes sense because the square root of four, if we replace x by four, the square root of four is two. So let's use this idea to solve these square root equations. And so I'm gonna rewrite, we have the square root of 12 minus eight w is six. And for this one, it's already solved for the square root term. So from here, we can just square each side of the equation. And again, the square root and the square are gonna cancel each other. It's just like adding five and then subtracting five. You just get back what you start with or what's on the inside here. And so it just becomes 12 minus eight W and six squared is 36. And now we just have a linear equation, which we can solve for. So we need to solve for W. So I'm going to subtract 12 on each side of this equation. And then we get minus eight W is equal to 24. And then to get W by itself, we'll divide everything by negative eight to cancel out that multiplication. And something divided by itself is always one. So minus eight divided by minus eight, that is just one. And we get W is 24 divided by negative eight, but that is just negative three. Now with all of these questions, you'll want to go back and actually plug in your answer to see if it makes sense. Now, in general, when solving equations, that's a strategy that you should use. You should always check your work once you find an answer. Since you can never be 100% certain that this is the right answer until you plug it back in and verify it for yourself. So that's a good habit to do anyways, but for these problems, it's necessary since a lot of times we'll end up with what are called extraneous solutions or solutions that don't actually solve the problem. And in a later video, we'll look at that in greater depth to try and understand why that's the case, why we actually end up with some extra solutions sometimes. But for now, the main important point to remember is that you have to always plug your answer back in and see if it makes sense. So we're gonna check this. So let me just make a little bit more room here. So when we check, we're just gonna plug negative three back into the equation. So we have the square root of 12 minus eight times negative three. And we're hoping this will equal six. And if it doesn't, then this equation doesn't have any solutions. So when we simplify here, this becomes minus eight times minus three, which is positive 24. And so 12 plus 24 is 36, but it's true that the square root of 36 is six. So this made sense, W does equal negative three. We didn't end up with something that wasn't true here or didn't make sense. So we can put negative three into our box here.